Oh my gosh. So we'd love to be on the water today. Uh, it's about 103. Uh, this is our, I don't know, 16th, 16th day above 100. Uh, it's just getting hotter and hotter, no wind. Uh, this is our second hottest summer ever. The last one was in 1980. Uh, and by the end of this week, we should surpass 1980 with you know sequential 100 degree days and just overall average temperature. Um, I didn't realize how hot it was because, you know, honestly, I work in attics all the time and, you know, I'm always outside, so it really didn't bother me. But apparently, it's really, really bad here. It's a major heat wave in Texas, so it's really hot. Um, and still got to work. So I'm outside. Uh, my dad's on his way over. We're going to attempt to get the outdrive on, get uh, all that stuff, you know, secured today, get the trim cylinders on, get those blood out, start, add power, and see if we can't. Uh, you know, get things uh, rolling a little further as far as getting this thing started. We might even get the exhaust cut. I'm really nervous about cutting these holes in the side, but hey, what are you going to do? So anyway, uh, it's right now probably 103, 104. I'm going to go get the truck back up to the, the boat and back it further in here to uh, uh, get underneath the shade and then uh, clean out a little pathway from my horrible mess in my garage. Uh, and uh, see about getting the all the little seals and stuff like that put on the outdrive. And then once my dad gets here, we'll see if we can stab that sucker in there. First things though, we got to get the trim cylinders on because we need to get them bled out before we go sticking the outdrive on. Anyway, so that's where we are so far. Um, I will update you as it goes, and if we don't pass out from this friggin' heat, but we got to get this done. It's not stop. You know, it's uh, summer's not stopping just about ready to put the outdrive on let me go over what we've done so far um, pretty self-explanatory as far as how the trim system works um, the way you bleed the thing is is of course i put my new trim cylinders on which these are the ones from sei uh, and i had them attached to the drive and we would set them on the the box itself and then we went inside the boat and filled the cylinder full of, of 10w30 and started going in and out with it. And what that's doing is it push air through the system and then eventually replace it with oil. And we went, made it go all the way out, all the way in, all the way out. Probably did that four or five times to make sure all the air's out of it. And uh, it kind of turns the, the, the foam and the, the, the uh, oil into a foam. It's kind of a, a, kind of a gross mixture, but it eventually goes out like a little root beer float. All the foam, all the foam bubbles come out and it's nice clear motor oil. So these things are bled out. Uh, we've replaced all the anodes. We did an anode here. We did an anode underneath here. Uh, we did the two anodes on the stern dry or the uh, the trim cylinders. We've replaced all the gaskets, which we just used a little bit of adhesive to glue the gaskets on so they don't fall off when you're putting them in there. So we have one there where the um, the shift cable goes in. We have one here where the water jacket is. Um, we greased the U-joints. It's a main thing. This took four pumps to actually start coming out the cups. You see that right there? You want to make sure that it comes out the cups. Um, then you have some O-ring gaskets right here that you need to make sure get put on. And uh, then you have one O-ring over here for your dribble valve. Now, in order to get rid of all the air inside the dribble valve, what you do is you fill your, your monitor, which is right here. That's where your gear oil goes in. And then you push this little button right here and you'll see, watch, there's gear oil comes out. And as soon as you get all the gear oil coming out, then you're done. And you stop and that's when we load our, uh, our, our outdrive on. Um, this is pretty much just brute force, guys. You take the outdrive here, you take your needle nose pliers, which are right here. And you grab the bottom of this guy and you this thing right here and you pull it out so therefore yeah it's a little easier said than done with one hand there you go see I pulled that out right there now you've got it all the way out and you can lift up on this little detent right here and what that does is that allows this little piece right here to slip into it and you want to make sure that your remote control or shift mechanism is in neutral so therefore it's in the right spot so that's what you do just before you put it in there. You grab hold of this, pull it all the way out, make sure it's good, lift this up. So here goes nothing.
Alright, so what we want to do is slide it forward. Oh, ah, my fingers. Now, oh, no. There. Okay, hold on, hold on. Slow. This, you know, we get right here too. I know this thing is too high, so we need to we need to lower the frame of the boat to because you ideally we'd like to get this nice oh, and yeah, even. Yeah, yeah. So if we can get it unhitched and lower the front of the boat, we'll be able to get this done. Okay. We'll be back in a minute. Back in a minute. <laughs> Okay, finally got it. Um, had to send my dad on the inside with the breaker bar and actually move the engine just a teensy bit. It's real hard to grab hold of that shaft down there and move the drive to be able to line it up. Once he got in there and did that, I gave it a little kick with my foot. Yes, I did do it. But once you did, it slid right on in. So we're gonna bolt it down, make sure all the functions work, put the trim cylinders on. We'll be good to go. Okay, here goes nothing. We're going to lift this out drive with the new trim cylinders. I haven't done it yet, so we're going to see if it's going to work. So you guys will see if I'm either going to fail or we're going to succeed. Well, we got it on. Got the trim cylinders on. Let me show, tell you, also tell you something first. These little things right here are directional. Um, these are, you got one that's starboard and one that's uh, port. Now I had them on correctly, but these things spin. And apparently this one got sp uh, spun in shipping or when I was putting it on or something like that. So when we screwed it on, it looked funny. We just take it back off, flip it, put it back on. Worked fine. So anyway, oh, you're gonna videotape this. Come on, baby. Look at this. I got the Corsa system kind of mocked up. What I did is I took where I want my exit to go, and now I haven't cut the hole yet, but what I'm doing is I wanted to make sure that my route was gonna be okay. Then I measured my length of my hose and added in the inch because I wanted to make sure when it goes through the hole, it's gonna be all right. And uh, as you can see, we're good. I've got a little bit of play. This is kind of tight in here with my, uh, with my bi or, uh, bilge blower. It's not too bad, it won't be any big deal. So now I gotta do the other side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make up a couple of templates to uh, find our center. I'll show you exactly how those work a little bit later also. But so far, so good with the Corsa system. Got lots of clearance. Well, now that we got the outdrive <clears throat> and everything on, we're down to the, the uh, Corsa exhaust. 
And we've made the uh, wise decision is we're going to take it over to the, uh, the uh, lake real quick and drop it in and make sure we're at the water line. Um, so this is kind of our first pseudo launch, I guess you'd say. Um, but we're just going to go see where it sits in the water so that way we don't cut the exhaust in the wrong spot. I'll walk over here and show you what I'm talking about and kind of where we're looking we're going to cut. Uh, and, and that way we can be sure we're 100%. Now, we're going to go also fill it full of gas too so that way we got the right amount of weight. So, see you at the lake. She looks good behind the truck, doesn't she? I'll show you what we're talking about on the cutout. See, we got a pencil mark right here. That's kind of where it needs to be. And according to pictures I've found on the internet, the water line is right here. So we'll be just fine. It'll drop a little below the water line whenever we accelerate, but that's no big deal at all. But you know, that, that's gonna be perfect. That's about where I want it. So like I said, here we go. See you at the lake. All right, here we go. Tell by the smile on my face that I'm happy. No water leaks, no nothing. 
uh, it floated perfectly fine, but we also saw that we need to put some side things on the trailer so we can see where it's sitting and so it doesn't float off either direction. So it floats level, it floats where we need it to be so we can go ahead and go back and cut the holes tomorrow, install that exhaust, and hopefully get a first fire real soon. And maybe we'll be on the lake real soon also. So until next time, guys, see ya.